previously. So the focus here will be slightly different, um, obviously underrepresented groups, but this is more a workshop to discuss proposals and less training. I mean, so it's the idea is to discuss policies and things like that. Um, and of course, the focus will be slightly different. It's more on uh, Afro uh, descendants, Afro-Brazilian, Afro-American descendants, also um, people, indigenous populations and also low-income populations. But of course, you can discuss all underrepresented groups. There's no, there's no reason to restrict to that. Um, so we have a wonderful set of speakers. This is during, um, I guess it's in, in US, it's Black History Month. Here it's Conciencia Negra, which is a coincidence which uh, actually made it more difficult because there are many simultaneous events going on. So we had many speakers who had to cancel at the last minute because of that. But we're fortunate to have a great set of speakers. So I'm one of the organizers. Karen Halberg is the other one, and Jandir Oliveira. So uh, maybe each of them can s just say a few minutes before we start with the first. Thank you very much, Nathan. Good morning, every everybody. I come from Argentina. My name is Karen Holberg. I'm a physicist. I work in Bariloche in the south of Argentina. I came in very late last night, so <laughs> I'm not jet lagged, <laughs> but uh, it was a long trip. Uh, but I'm very happy to be here again. Uh, thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Jandira. For I mean, it was a, a nice work together. Um, the idea is uh, also to complement the, the previous free, three first days uh, of the workshop also on uh, diversity and inclusion. So this, of course, has to do with diversity and inclusion, uh, but it's a, it's a different point of view is to try to boost uh, um, political decisions and to try to reach decision makers uh, to see if uh, uh, how the ICTP and how we as physicists can help uh, can help bring more people from other communities, uh, not only in Brazil, uh, but uh, this is a S South American Institute for Physics, so I'm also interested in seeing how we can do this in Argentina, uh, not only in South America, in Mexico, uh, in Latin America, and we also have not only, uh, we have a, an underrepresented number of women in physics, uh, but we also have, a number, uh, we have uh, large communities which do not access higher education and even less uh, physics. So this is, this is the, the idea, uh, and uh, so the, the uh, the idea will be that towards the end, tomorrow, uh, uh, we, we try to, to summarize uh, our proposals and then with time, we, we want to write um, a summary and like a report uh, so that this report uh, reaches uh, governments and decision makers and other physicists. So, so the idea is really to try to think of, of uh, concrete uh, measures to see how we can improve the situation. So thank you very much and uh, I give the floor to Jandira. So good morning, my name is Janjira. Um, so we have been thinking about organizing this event for a long time. Um, we saw that there were many diversity initiatives and conferences and so on, but we miss somehow the, the discussion about what people are doing to change the situation of underrepresented groups and uh, how could we just put together these people to discuss and somehow attract people to discuss public policies as Nathan and Karen uh, said. So I would like to welcome everybody and I hope it can be like a fruitful meeting with plenty of discussion. Thank you. So we just need to get the IR to this. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so the first speaker, we're very lucky to have Yang Ki Kim, who's going to be the next I guess president of APS, American Physical Society, so we're very lucky to have her here, who's going to tell us about um, activities of APS for inclusivity and diversity. Thank you very much, Nathan. Um, again, thank you for the invitation, and I'm glad to be here. I'm very pleased to be here uh, to uh, discuss with you and show you some examples of APS activities, uh, especially on, on uh, enhancing inclusivity and embracing diverse uh, programs. Um, I really look forward to uh, your outcome of uh, this workshop because I'll tell you what we are doing and we have a lot more to do and outcome of this workshop will be very uh, beneficial for us uh, and in getting uh, some ideas how to do better. So I'm an experimental particle physicist from the University of Chicago. As Nathan mentioned, uh, I'm currently president-elect of the American Physical Society, APS, but I'll become uh, president uh, from January 2024. 
I just want to uh, start by saying that we are committed to fostering an inclusive physics culture that values and lifts up diversity, equity, belonging, accessibility, and ethics. This is a big task. I'm not here saying we are doing all, we are close to even complete. We are far away from, from complete and, and just, uh, just showing at what we are doing uh, to uh, enhance that as much as we can. Uh, it's because we believe that creating a more inclusive community is not only a moral imperative, but also an essential step to strengthen our discipline and ensure a future where everyone uh, can be a physicist. I want to show you American Physics Society's mission value, uh, vision values shown here on the left. Of course, I don't want to hear, I say everything is too small font in any case, but I just want to highlight a few of uh, the uh, bullet points that emphasizing what we are saying in our programs on diversity and inclusion. So here are two bullets under mission. Uh, provide a welcoming and supportive pro pro professional home for an active, engaged, and diverse membership. Promote effective physics education for all. This including, and especially for those uh, who, who are underrepresented groups uh, and, and who didn't have uh, much resources for education. Under our vision, we have a bullet uh, saying foster equity and inclusion and increase diversity in all its dimensions. And when you talk about diversity, there are many dimensions we have to think about and, and we wanna uh, do as much as we can in all dimensions. And we have uh, the, also our values. One of them is a diversity, inclusion, and research, respect. Also another relevant uh, value is just speaking out uh, is uh, also relevant to one. APS has about 50,000 members uh, from all over the world. Uh, and, and we have so-called units, uh, about 50 units based on uh, their interests uh, on, on either research or other uh, matters. And each member belongs at you know, one or two or three uh, units, uh, depending on their interests. Uh, we have uh, 17 divisions based on subfields of uh, physics and also specific uh, research areas. We have uh, 13 topical groups. The U.S. is a very big, uh, so large area, so we have uh, sections representing uh, all their regions, so we have uh, nine of them. And we also have uh, forums, including diversity and inclusion forum, and forum of early career scientists, and forum of international physics, etc. And overall, this uh, APS, I, I mentioned uh, the units and, and 50,000 members. That at the high level, we have uh, APS board. This board is uh, the, the uh, uh, overall responsibility for governance and all uh, of uh, the uh, society's affairs and uh, chaired by APS president. We have uh, 16 board members and Karen is uh, one of them. And we have a council which has uh, about 40, uh, a little bit more than 40, uh, representatives from all the units that I mentioned earlier, 50 units, and their focus is on science and membership. Uh, we also have uh, APS-wide committees. Each the, the unit has their own committees, but this, this here I'm showing the list of uh, APS-wide committees, uh, in, but we have about 20 of them, including Committee on Early uh, the Careers and Professional Development, International Freedom of Scientists, International Scientific Affairs, Minorities in Physics, Status of a Woman in Physics and Ethics Committee. So this one on the left top shows uh, the, our homepage of APS. So if you click APS.org, this will pop up. And if you go to a program, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, it has uh, education and ethics, uh, international affairs, public engagement, women in physics, uh, the minorities in physics, LGBT physicists, industrial physics, and innovation, and honors, and careers. So you get some idea that what kind of programs we have. Uh, here's are some the uh, those programs in more uh, graphic images, but again, uh, we are trying to improve physics education, impact policymakers, enhance STEM workforce, increase uh, diversity, also, we want to inform the public about the uh, 
science. But the last one is a hidden here is a connecting the uh, international physicists. So that's another uh, program that we have. So I showed you that we have 50,000 uh, members, but we are, and we are doing the uh, board, uh, the members, the council members, the unit has also leaderships and all that. So this is a voluntary work, and our term, ten, usually about three years, that means we work on that, and the next group come in and do the work. So we have always changing phases uh, for when we have any program, uh, sustainability, sustaining, uh, maintaining, and improving the programs is important. So when you have a continuously changing people, it's sometimes hard to keep up, and, and therefore we, have, we need a strong staff foundation. These people are permanent positions working for the organization. So here shows the uh, overall the, uh, organization structure. We have about 300 uh, staff members. Uh, on top, we have uh, John Beggar, who is a chief uh, executive officer, and we have under that, uh, these are the, the uh, senior leaderships on finance, operation, or human resources, external affairs, and experience, uh, well, the, the communication, and publications, and uh, computer and information. So I just want to point out that we have a department called the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, Belonging, and Accessibility. Uh, and also ethics department. And under external affairs officer, we have uh, Amy Flatton, international affairs. She's the director of that, and some of you are very familiar with her because she's uh, the one connecting APS to uh, many so physical societies across the world, and also international organizations such as IUPAP and ICTP and et cetera. So she has a very important figure uh, to the international community. So all the programs are not just done by these people, that are the program related to all diversity, inclusion, equity, it's all buried in these programs or it's the, uh, of course here and here and some other areas. So this is not done by one department or organization, but really uh, the, uh, uh, embedded in all of our activities. So those programs, if you kind of... Uh, uh, sort of describe in the themes, we could say about uh, five themes. Uh, change the culture of uh, physics, aspire to serve as a global, uh, the welcoming global hub, prepare the next generation of uh, physicists, foster a culture of uh, collaboration and innovation, promote and facility, facilitate a meaningful uh, education in STEM. So these are the uh, sort of five themes, uh, the, the, if, for, for our pro overall programs. Today, I just want to give you a few examples focused on inclusion and diversity uh, covering these uh, three uh, themes. First of all, changing the culture of uh, physics. Uh, the, in the US, uh, there are quite a bit of a concern about the physics uh, teachers in high school. We have a certainly lack of physics teachers. That, that means that Physics teacher careers are not very popular in the U.S., and that's one of our main concerns. And th with these programs, we want to really uh, help, or at least uh, the, the, uh, make our students understand the, uh, how one can have a career in high school teachers or college teacher. That's one, some of our activities. But also, uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, shortage in teacher in high school, the science teachers who don't have a much of a physics uh, the education end up teaching. So we want to provide all the material so that they can teach uh, physics in high school well. And also uh, at the college level, uh, there are a lot of teachers need uh, more resources of what's the best way of teaching, especially if you want to uh, bring up underrepresented group who don't, didn't have, uh, don't have the uh, strong, the background because they didn't have uh, much resources uh, before coming to college. So the teaching method to really help them is very key. So there are a lot of uh, resources uh, helping our high school teachers and college teachers with the various programs. Some programs uh, we do in collaboration with the American Association of Physics Teachers, uh, etc. So uh, this is a, uh, we have a number of programs for that. Another uh, for increasing inclusivity and access, we have a so-called bridge program. This is when we have uh, 
fix undergraduate students when they finish, especially for underrepresented groups, minority group uh, students, uh, they are not uh, ready for PhD. So we want to help them by having one year program so that we give advanced courses and give some research experience, also coaching how to apply for graduate schools or perhaps also a other professional career. So that has been quite successful and, and uh, we have been doing that for quite a long time and uh, we believe that this is, has been helping for minority students intensively. And we have a program called IDEA, Inclu Inclusion, Diversity, Equity Alliance. So this is uh, the physics department in US and, and also uh, the organization, national lab organizations those uh, wanted to be better and, and equity, diversity, inclusion, but they don't know exactly how to do it. So we are creating network among these uh, uh, different organizations, departments, and national labs, and also coach them how to do better. Also, they exchange ideas on how to do better. If there are any success stories, they can share with the group. So this is really a networking group, and started uh, with uh, a couple of a dozen uh, the organizations, now we have a uh, hundred, uh, and there are, I, I think there's a last line has a, uh, the, the uh, 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 saying that now this is uh, the other countries also uh, joining this. So, so uh, now became almost an international organization. In total, we have about 100 departments and national labs joining this. So it has been quite, uh, we believe that successful. National Mentoring community, community, this one is uh, for undergraduate minority students in, in physics. And we match that with uh, faculty either in their own university or nearby university so that uh, they can have a continuous uh, mentorship between undergraduate minority students to uh, the faculty. Climate uh, site visit, uh, this one is any department or organization wants to evaluate uh, their climate in their unit. You know, sometimes you don't see yourselves easily, but external uh, group coming and evaluate you and you, you realize or you learn much more. So we provide external evaluation and then recommendations uh, on, on how to do better. And we also have uh, the Inclusive Graduate Education Network, uh, again, for, for supporting graduate students, especially uh, the minority groups. This was... Uh, uh, the supported by NSF. And we have a number of webinar series uh, trying to make the physics more inclusive and equitable. Uh, one is called the Delta Phi. You know, Delta is a difference, and Phi stands for physics. So, so I think this was uh, initiated by our former president of American Physics Society, Jim Gates, who is going to speak later. Uh, so that's his initiation. And here are a lot of issues. You will see some topics we covered. Uh, the impact of research security concerns. Uh, even though uh, the, uh, there are basic research, there are quite open collaboration and, and open access. But certain areas, it becomes uh, security uh, concerns and how to uh, really make sure that policy is uh, properly uh, implemented. So there are concerns about that. But we paid a lot of attention to uh, black students or physicists, uh, uh, the, uh, the systematic barriers that they face, so that was uh, one of the themes for one year. So we have a number of topics that another area is uh, if there's any anti-DEI regulation, a uh, recent example was in, in Florida, and we're trying to understand what that means, what it impact. I think first uh, thing is uh, understanding the, the uh, this meaning of that and how uh, to make sure that uh, you know our activity uh, is it becomes legal, uh, still we continue uh, to promote DEI. So, so that kind of uh, educating ourselves is another webinar series we do. We have a conference for undergraduate uh, now moving to more women and gender minorities in physics uh, for as a part of a uh, next generation of a physicist. This uh, is cube. QWIP, we'd say, Conference for Undergraduate Women in Physics. This started in the 1980s with a small number of uh, uh, the departments uh, in the universities or the women undergraduate students at uh, this uh, annual meetings. And now it has been growing uh, rapidly. So we have, uh, the, for example, this is 2020 
uh, year 2020, the conference, uh, we have uh, 13 locations. The conference take place simultaneously. So you see that this uh, di different colors, meaning this is a one uh, local regional group, and the conference took place here and here, 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 here. That uh, 13 areas, and um, the nearby university students will come to that uh, the conference locations. Uh, all this, uh, the sites will do at least the same days for conference around the Martin Luther King uh, the, uh, uh, Day in January. So at one conference, uh, it was very powerful. We, one conference I went to, it's around the 2020 time, well, I went to several times. It's like a 20, 100 women, fixed majors attending. So it was really powerful to see that many students uh, just all coming together, even though there are local events, but we make a couple of hours, one session that everybody show coming visually via uh, video or, or Zoom. So seeing all 12 or 1300 fixed, women fixed majors, their faces are popping up. I think that you see that uh, kind of comfort of uh, the supporting network, and I think that's very powerful uh, for, for our women uh, undergraduate students to continue in physics. And there are a lot of uh, uh, the uh, various experiences, uh, sharing and advice and ideas, etc., among each other, and also with uh, speakers and panel uh, members who come to that. This became quite. Uh, well known and, and people thought uh, quite uh, valuable. So Canada picked that up and they have their own uh, annual conference and then UK also picked up. Okay. So another area is LB, uh, LGBTQ uh, plus a physicist. So we formed a uh, committee to uh, evaluate the uh, climate uh, for, for LGBTQ plus a physicist, and they had a focus groups um, at the APS annual meetings and also a climate survey uh, and, and uh, interviews with uh, LGBTQ plus a physicist. And so they made a report with all their findings and also made a list of recommendations. Uh, so like ensuring safe and welcoming environment at all APS meetings, uh, and also the need uh, uh, address the need to systematically accommodate and name changes in publication records because if they change gender, their names also change often, and how that is quickly recognized in publication that's very important, uh, critical for those who, uh, who go to academia and other the careers. Uh, the uh, also uh, supporting LGBTQ equity and inclusion. Uh, and promote a uh, very inclusive practice for LGBTQ physicists in all areas, academia, national labs, and industry. So these uh, recommendations are not just uh, what APS should do, but this has to be done by uh, a recommendation for all the uh, uh, universities, the national labs, et cetera. And I cannot remember exactly what <laughs> the other bullets are, uh, but there's also supporting, also creating the forum of uh, the, uh, uh, the, the LGBTQ uh, in, in the uh, uh, in part of diversity and inclusion, etc. So some of them are the APS is working uh, to to implement that, that, but the work is still going on, continuing. Okay. <laughs> now, from for the uh, the welcoming global hub. As I mentioned, we have 50,000 worldwide members. If you look at their origins, they are from more than 115 countries. And out of 50,000, more than actually 12,000, they work outside of or study outside of the US. So very uh, international already. And we want to make sure that every uh, member, doesn't matter your background, uh, their opinions and voices are valued and included and empowered. As an in, in example of our APS March meeting showing how international that is, total we had about 14,000 participants this annual meeting. So we APS have uh, two annual meetings, one take place in March, one take place in April. These are two different uh, these, uh, disciplines we divided into two, one in March, one in April. So this is a March, which is a bigger uh, than April, uh, the meeting typically. So 14,000 attendees, out of that we have about uh, 12 uh, 
100,000 or 13,000 in person. Uh, this is a sort of a, the, with the hybrid, so both in person and, and uh, the uh, uh, remote, but in person is uh, about 12,500. Out of that, 30% uh, came from outside of U.S., so that shows you how much of international that is. And then we had about, uh, about 1,500 the, uh, the uh, virtual participants. For that, like 57% uh, are international. Okay, and uh, we, we, given that we have uh, um, so many uh, international members, uh, this is already quite important that how we connect uh, to international, the organization and societies. Uh, and, and so uh, we'd like to uh, work on to, to serve as a welcoming global hub, hub uh, so that we offer the world physicists to connect with each other and advance their shared interest. Uh, this will be an opportunity to connect from any background, we hope, uh, regardless of race, nationality, ethics, and gender, and sexual orientation. And we'd like them to contribute to their physics uh, enterprise and also benefit from the uh, physics enterprise. We uh, would like to uh, strengthen our partnerships and uh, collaborations with uh, other national physics societies and international physics organizations such as IUPAP and ICTP, uh, et cetera. Okay. So we have launched uh, so-called the price equity uh, policy for uh, less resourced countries for our annual meetings, as I said, a March meeting and April meeting. So this concerns registration fees for lower income countries and lower middle uh, income countries. So we have a registration fee for them is like 10% of reg our regular registration fee uh, to attend the meetings. If they are from upper middle income countries, then uh, the 30% uh, the of the regular uh, recent fee is what's required. So we have substantial uh, uh, the, 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 uh, discount for, for them. We also studied uh, satellite meetings. This is a still pilot program, uh, although it looks like it uh, have a more countries joining, so that's a good sign. Uh, to extend the reach and diversity of annual March-April meetings. And the institutions uh, that host these meetings locally, uh, they convene local physics community to virtually watch the APS meetings, or they can have their own uh, programs locally, and at the same time, also different time, uh, not different time, and, and, and then also attend uh, a meeting so they can combine. Uh, people can also present their research at the APS uh, meetings via uh, the Zoom. So 2020, this is the first year we started uh, South Africa and Wanda and India joined. And 2023, Brazil, ICTP, Cypher joined. Uh, and, and this is one of uh, the, uh, the web page uh, from the April meeting this year. And uh, also Jordan joined. Uh, we are working on 2024 uh, satellite meetings. So if any of you are interested in hosting, please let us know. We have a APS International Young Leaders Forum. This is an annual event. 50 plus young physicists from 27 nationalities, 19 countries, spanning six uh, continents. This is a roundtable discussion on how APS can serve needs of international young physicists. Uh, in addition, we also provide the sessions on publishing in peer-reviewed journals. Together with uh, the five physics societies in Europe, so six including APS, uh, we uh, have a program uh, it's called the Sesame Travel Award Program to support training opportunities for Middle East physicists to use a Sesame. Sesame is the, uh, uh, the synchrotron light source for the Middle East and it's located in Jordan. We have international physics roundtable annually. Uh, as currently, we have uh, 16 physics societies uh, and get together and, and think about how to collaborate t uh, t using uh, our common interest. And, and we really look forward to uh, more diverse physics societies joining uh, this roundtable. Uh, this is one of the topics the next year 
uh, I'll mention about the uh, Physics Leadership Summit meetings. This is uh, ICTP, uh, APS, EPS, a partnership program, and this Travel Award the Fellowship Program, ATEP. Uh, this provides uh, career enhancing opportunities for early career scientists from developing countries. We have a Young Physics, uh, young physics Forum. This is a partnership with the Brazilian Physical Society and Chinese Physical Society. Uh, here's the one. Uh, the event took place in 2020 here I see TP Cipher uh, this is a jointly uh, the hosted uh, held by APS and I see TP Cipher we have a uh, online colloquium series called the physics of matters uh, this activity is uh, initiated by the forum of international physics of APS uh, this is to support international engagement for APS among students and early career physicists uh, targeting a developing community audiences. We also have, APS have uh, uh, the agreement with uh, 50 physics societies. Uh, and, and agreement is that if uh, those societies that we have agreed with, uh, those, uh, any members from their society can attend our, uh, the APS scientific meetings and vice versa. So that's this program. So still uh, a lot more to do to strengthening global partnership. So next year, we are planning to have a physical leadership summit committees, uh, the, uh, starting with uh, early, no, the, the late January uh, 2024, we have uh, the uh, summit meeting in Washington, DC. We already have uh, the agreed, um, the, the present from of big societies in Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Cuba, and Mexico, and U.S., of course. Uh, we are hosting that. Uh, and also uh, the president of uh, the overall Latin Field Society and director of ICTP Cipher. So we'll be all got together to uh, discuss. First of all, we have to learn from each other each, who they are, understanding each other much better. That's the first step. And also uh, sharing their challenges, their society, their organization's challenges, and uh, finding a common interest uh, for, uh, for their partnerships. We plan to have uh, one with Africa, Asia Pacific, and Europe and Middle East. And then that's a more the first half. And second half of the next year, anything we, uh, the findings and recommendations from these meetings will implement. Uh, next, 2025 uh, it will likely be a year of uh, quantum science and technology. Uh, this is uh, IUPAP uh, has already approved, and, and we are waiting for the final uh, the decision. But this was uh, initiated by our Mexican Field Society and other uh, field societies in Latin America. So we are very appreciated. And APS is uh, fully engaged uh, to uh, support this one. So if we want to do anything, 2025, uh, year of uh, quantum science and technology, a lot of preparation should be done. So I'm hoping that 2024 is uh, uh, some focus is how to prepare uh, 2025 quantum year. We are moving to our home from rather near University of Maryland, a little bit far away from Washington, D.C., and the airport, and et cetera. So we are moving that to much closer to a uh, White House. In fact, it's walking distance. Uh, and, and so because a lot of our activities are also what, uh, something uh, the, together, working with the policymakers, and et cetera. So it's much more convenient. Also, it's very close to uh, the uh, one of the popular airport and et cetera, so it's very convenient. Also, overall layout will be much more open and collaborative. Uh, so this, we feel that this is not the office for uh, building for staff, but it's more like a meeting place for all the, the community and physics and gathering place. So we'll have a, a lot of meetings and workshop uh, we hope to have. And we would like to welcome all of you, all the international physics community, uh, who wanted to have uh, meetings there and workshops, or just uh, visiting Washington. Uh, we hope uh, to uh, welcome you. We're still not finalized the building, uh, but uh, the, uh, the 
we, we stop be able to use this space the spring next year for the visitors to the international community will open summer next year. And next year is the 125th uh, anniversary of American Physical Society. So uh, it is a somewhat nice timing. So we'll also have an a event uh, that is new place next year. So in conclusion, um, while our membership is more diverse today than ever before, uh, work in this area is far from complete. I said that early at the beginning. Uh, APS will continue its commitment to increasing the, the member, number of members from underrepresented groups in physics at all, la all career stages, removing barriers to participation and taking an active role in organizational and, and institutional efforts to bring about this uh, uh, change. So we have a lot to do. As I said, I hope I will learn from, from uh, today, this uh, workshop and, and uh, something that we hope to implement uh, in, in APS also in programs. Uh, this work is uh, entire, just not a few people. This is not just a few staff members, not a few c our society members, but this everybody has to work together. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Plenty of time. Thank you for the very interesting talk. I have many questions I will uh -huh. ask. I will ask two. Yeah. Uh, one is if you have a way to monitor the impact of your policies to try to increase diversity, mm -hmm. because that's usually something that is hard to, right, to right. quantify. Absolutely. What's the impact of your actions? Right, right. And how you do it. I would like to, to learn yeah, that. Yeah. And then something about addressing the need to systematically accommodate name changes in publication records. Is that something that the uh, APS journals do? That wh how do you do that? How are you doing that? Right, right. So that's exactly what they are. The uh, this LGBTQ community would like to make sure. Start with the APS journals. When the names are changed, uh, there's a. It has to be really prompt. That's we are working on it. I think it's, we are still uh, not, not, not completely implemented. But we are very well aware of that. Um, and then, and then uh, exactly how to do it, that's, that's uh, the, uh, more uh, the work to be done. In terms of uh, the measuring, it's very hard, as you know. But we have, uh, for example, that uh, you know, the report came up, so-called a, a team up a report. Um, and and uh, just this is uh, for enhancing number of black uh, students. And our goal, of, of, in general, goal is uh, doubling the number. Uh, within, I cannot remember exactly how many years. So, uh, so that's one of the measures. So we constantly checking, you know, ethical of the of the background and and uh, what uh, percentage of uh, our members are there. And we are working very closely. Uh, we have to work, f probably uh, working closely, but we have more work to do. We have a Black Physics Society and also a Hispanic Physics Society and how to uh, engage them better. So we are constantly checking the percentage level. So we have graphs all different. So uh, it's really uh, you know, often said that it's not going as fast as, as uh, we would like to. So there are measures, as we just uh, question is how to <laughs> make the slope. Or uh, some cases uh, there's uh, no slope and how to uh, fix that. And this is a very culturally, uh, you know, it's not that one society can solve. I mean, one, one field society can solve. This is a buried from very early education, middle school, high school, and college. So uh, we trying a lot from top level, but supplies is not there. If it's not there, then it's very much harder to uh, uh, fix it. I mean, like uh, the other one is, uh, you know, women in uh, physics, if you look at the uh, uh, measures, it has been growing linearly last uh, three, four decades, a few percent to 20 percent. Last 15 years, a 20 percent woman flat. Uh, there are a lot of uh, <laughs> stories and a lot of uh, ways to understand why, but I don't think we are fully understanding all the causes because it's very, very deeply 
uh, buried in the society. So people can ask in Portuguese, we can translate if people want to. Okay. Uh, good morning, thank you for your talk. Uh, I have some doubts about the, this evaluation about the Chile climate in departments. I the evaluation of uh, oh yeah we yeah. yeah that's okay go ahead <laughs> I I didn't understand the, how this works what is this chilly climate uh, what do you mean by this uh, I don't get it right well the, the word was a little bit too strong chilling um, any organization is a fixed department or I actually used to uh, be working as as a deputy director for Family Lab that's one of the national labs in U.S. And, and we recognize, at that time, I'm giving you my experience, they recognize that there are some, the climate issues, meaning this is all underrepresented groups, including women, in STEM. Uh, numbers are low, uh, you know, and, and also uh, there are, you know, it's, it's not big problems, but very, you know, the groups and how microaggression uh, toward the women or uh, minorities and all that. This is a concern everywhere. So some institutions usually say, you know, we're trying to do our own uh, ways to uh, find out what our problems are. Sometimes uh, you are working in that organization too long. You don't really see. It, it's there, but, uh, you know, it's better. And also, uh, you always, uh, you have been uh, so loyal to this organization, and we try not to see the big problems, right? So that's a tendency of, of uh, our humans. So uh, we ask APS, because APS this program, and say, hey, uh, could you uh, form a group of experts? These are people who are social science. These are not just physicists, uh, these are experts. Uh, they form a group of a, a few people. Uh, we want to apply for that. So APS has sent uh, that group to Film Lab, and they in, the interview with all our visiting students or staff and everybody there, and then came up with, the, hey, this, we identify that these are these problems. Why it's also good is that if our national the labs, our senior managers asking your staff and saying, hey, what's the problem? They you know, of course, they don't say the real truth. But if external group coming and there are no identifications, etc., hidden, identification hidden, they can really freely saying what the problems. So we identify the problems by this external group uh, organized by APS, and then immediately we form the focus group tackling those events, the issues. So I think it was a very helpful to really see what kind of issues. So it's not only because you have a problems, I mean, everybody has a problem, but it's not, not only that uh, we recognize the problems and inviting them, but even if you don't really see, you just say, hey, I want to see if we are in good organization in EDI or not. So this is uh, what our APS is providing. Uh, for me, this, I think this is a good idea because usually we, we know, but we don't know. <laughs> right, it's like right, everybody right. seeing, but nobody how knows how to say how how to to change the environment or do right. something. That's right. That's right. Maybe. So if external group who don't have any connection to uh, this uh, the institute coming in and uh, finding uh, the problems, it's much uh, the uh, how do I say easily more easily identified by external group and, than and us. maybe it's more. Uh, light or less heavier for the people who is uh, tar who is the target to to manage the situation because uh, usually we have to speak out and <laughs> it may be sometimes we we are not listened so that's right uh, yeah that in that sense that the external uh, group evaluating you is a much much better people speak up uh, to them they're not to their own senior advisors right yeah. Because they are the ones who write the you know salaries and, and they determine all that and they don't want to uh, really upset your your advisors. Okay, so we'll have another session of asking questions in the afternoon. So maybe let's go to the next okay. speaker. And so thanks very much. Okay, thank you.